people are looking for an answer. They want that to be the answer. Like they think that they've solved the problem and found like the golden star, the key to success when you can blame something like carbs. Like if that was it, then, you know, it would change their whole life. So I think people really just want the very simple answer. It's easier if, if carbs are to blame. Like if they have something to blame, I think that that's the easy way out. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to a brand new episode this week of Dieting from the Inside Out. If you're new around here, my name is Jared Hamilton, and I'm so excited that you're here. For real, there's a lot of places you could be on the internet, and the fact that you're here with me is pretty fucking dope. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Now, today is a really cool episode because I wanted to give you a whole different per a whole different perspective around how to lose the weight and change your life permanently, where it never, where the success, I should say, never goes away. Um, and I did that with a little bit different style of interview. So I actually have a team member of mine, one of my, one of my coaches that you guys have never met before on the podcast for some reason, like she's been, she's been part of the team for a while now. And, uh, it just schedules just were colliding. Just wasn't happening, getting her on the show. But, um, Caroline is a registered dietitian, extremely intelligent and brilliant and such a fantastic coach, but because she comes from a different perspective from she struggled and she opens up about her story a little bit where from her struggles, like in high school, some like disordered eating and a horrible relationship with exercise, but then went to school and got her, uh, her became a registered dietitian and is now extremely educated and very, very, very good at what she does inside our coaching program. And it, her perspective is just different, which is beautiful. I love it. I love bringing in different people who we share the same mission. We share the same beliefs, but our perspectives are very different because you'll probably resonate with her in a different way than you will with me just because different life experiences. But we had a great conversation around, uh, we went all over the place, why you should not be scared to eat more, why eating things like carbs and sugar um, are actually helpful for losing weight and keeping it off, um, how to basically make this game way more simpler, way more doable, way easier but more importantly, how to have permanent results in the fastest and most sustainable way possible. So yeah, we got into a lot and I know you'll get a lot out of this episode. So, but before we get into the actual interview, huge thank you to the sponsors of the show. Sponsor number one is Flex Pro Meals. Um, always got to say a big thank you to them for keeping my fridge stocked, but a lot of our clients use them and it just makes things so much easier and more seamless when it comes to, to your nutrition. Because if we're being honest, spending a lot of time in drive throughs makes weight loss a little bit harder. Um, you don't feel as good. And in this economy, you're going to be spending quite a bit more money. I think I went to Chipotle the other day. I was out of town. Um, I went to Chipotle with my wife and just the two of us was like over $30 and which is just crazy if you think about it. But Flex Pro is going to give you food that is actual real food. It's made by a chef. It tastes great. Uh, it's more convenient and faster than fast food, but it's way more affordable. So definitely check them out. Uh, if you use my code Hamilton trained, uh, it's going to save you like 20% at checkout, but either go to flexpromeals.com or go check them out in the podcast description. Uh, sponsor number two is first form. I'm always rocking a first form shirt cause they're comfy. Um, but first form guys, you have to understand, like we talk about, like I've talked about before is, uh, when it comes to supplements, they are not the end all be all you they're They're supp called supplements for a reason. They're meant to supplement the gaps you are not getting with food. Be so if you're hitting all your protein in a really simple way, if you don't have digestion issues, if you're getting all of your vitamins from like, like so many servings of fruits and vegetables every single day, cool. You probably don't need them, but very few people are actually doing that. Most people like looking at our clients, most people struggle getting their protein in while without going over on their calories. Most people are not eating the fruits and vegetables they should. So they're not getting the, the, the micronutrients they need. Most people are not um, having the inflammation properties of like omegas because um, they're not eating enough fish during the week, things like that. So it's just one of those things that helps fill, fills the gaps to get you to your results better, faster, in a more sustainable way. Now, the thing is though, I want you to, I would basically want to make sure you don't waste your money by just hopping on Amazon or going to, you know, yahoo supplements.com. I don't even know if that's a real website, just whatever, trying to find what's cheapest and the most tolerable to taste. Uh, I just don't like the idea of going about that because, um, you're going to end up for most of the time, like getting products that are not going to be as helpful that are cheaply made that arguably aren't even made by a real company. They're made in someone's basement. I just want to make sure your money is going, going to the products that are actually going to help you and the highest quality stuff you can get. So, which is why that we partner with first form. So definitely go check out the link below. Um, 
and just start looking around their website. If you're not quite sure where to start with supplements, I have a video below my supplement video on like kind of where to go, where to start with that stuff. Um, but definitely check out what, what they have going on. And I think you'll be surprised. And then the first form even has a, like the most dope return policy. Like it's 110% back, um, guarantee money back guarantee. So if you don't like their shit or you don't like the way it tastes, you'll actually make money by returning it. It's crazy, but they're, that's how good they are. So, um, but that's it. Be sure. Also, if you have not checked out the podcast website, dieting from the inside out.com, you will have all these episodes, including this one, uh, with the actual blog fashion. So it's written if you'd rather read through the interview as well. So check that out. Otherwise I will be quiet now and we'll get here from Caroline and I'll talk to you in just a second. What's up? What's up, Caroline? Nothing much. How are you? I'm good. Good. It's been 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> for <laughs> those that feels. right. So for those that don't know, Caroline's actually been on the team for, for a, a minute, but w- scheduling just has not worked out to get a podcast together, but we made it happen. And of course it's when you moved across the country, like yeah. the one opportunity we could have <laughs> done it like in the same room. <laughs> yeah. I think we had two scheduled and both of them fell through. One of them was with a client. One of them was just us, but we made it either way. Better late than never. No, it's good. Um, I didn't notice it until you mentioned it. We do straight up match. Yours is like a little darker, but it works. I'm half colorblind, so, but I so I don't I don't know. But so if you're if those that are listening aren't watching the YouTube, then you should go to the YouTube and watch it to see how much we match. But anyway. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, Caroline, before we get into all of this, all the stuff to get a little more tactical around, you know, the stuff to help people. Um, I think it's really important for people to understand like who Caroline is, um, and then, and stuff like that. So give a little bit of a, a background on like who you are and your story, and then we'll just see where the conversation goes. Okay. Let's see. Who am I? Who is question. Caroline? <laughs> um, yeah. So I am a dietitian. I, I don't even know where to start. I'll start with Kind of my story. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like like how, that's you got, a good... how you even got into this stuff? Okay. I don't even know if you know this, Jared, but um let's I love learning new things. So let's hear <laughs> it. I don't think I don't think we really got into um some of like my history and yeah. when I was interviewing to yeah. work with you. But um so basically it all kind of started around high school, which I feel like a lot of people probably can relate to because that's a very big body image type. You're you're super worried about what other people think of you, um, probably more than what you think of yourself. But um I felt like I just didn't feel comfortable in my skin, like at all. Like looking back, it's one of those things where I was totally normal, like totally normal, healthy body size, but I was comparing myself to all my teeny tiny friends and I was very uncomfortable with what I looked like. And I just kind of dealt with it. I did all the different things. Like I bought those, um, what do you call them? Like raspberry ketone pills. Yeah. I used to sell those when I was at GNC. Oh my gosh. I was (laughs) that Chad. Yeah. yeah. But, and they're basically just appetite suppressants. They don't, yeah, they, yeah. Don't, they kill your appetite, which is really sad <laughs> when you think about it. But, um, I tried all the different stuff. Like I Googled like how to lose 10 pounds in, you know, two weeks, which is really sad as like a teenager and as a kid thinking back to that. Um, but I just, I didn't want to look like myself anymore. Um, and then I went to college and I was like, you know, I'm going to make the, I'm going to be different. I'm actually going to lose the weight. I'm going to change things. I, I want to like reinvent myself. Um, so I went kind of even more extreme and I, I kind of had a better understanding of calories and I knew I needed to, to cut calories to lose weight and get in the gym. And so I went to the gym every single day. It was a very unhealthy relationship with it. I went to the gym every single day. I remember like puking at the gym cause I was working too hard. And I didn't tell a soul, like I didn't tell my roommate who was like still one of my best friends. Um, I was working way too hard and I was, you know, Googling what's the lowest calorie foods that you can do. I was eating a salad pretty much for every single meal. Um, and I definitely lost some weight, but very, very disordered eating. I don't know if it was like an actual eating disorder. Um, I don't really know where it would fall into that, but I definitely, it was very disordered and the um, pat, it was disordered styles and patterns of eating for sure. Yes. Like the way my relationship with food was horrible. I viewed everything by calories. Um, my relationship with exercise was horrible. Um, yeah, just a very dark time. I remember like I would keep saltines under my bed. So that was when I would get a little hungry, I would like have a saltine because it was so low calorie, but it was enough to like keep me going. And my, of course, my anxiety was horrible at this time. Um, a lot of the times those go very hand in hand. So, um, 
but yeah, that was, that was my call. That was the beginning of college. And then I was, I was studying to be a PA. So I was kind of like on the pre-med route. And then I decided to take a nutrition course as just an elective. Cause you had to take random electives. Um, and it changed my world, like learning all about nutrients and how our body, we literally need them. Like our body is designed to have protein, fats, carbohydrates, like sugar. We need all of that. It totally rocked my world. Um, and in the best way possible, because I know some people think like, you know, you learn more about food and you, you kind of go the opposite route, but mine was the other way. Like I, I knew I needed all this food. So it just like slowly improved my relationship with food, you know, what I knew I needed, all of that stuff. Um, so it was really cool because I knew that I needed to change something. So then I switched my entire major to nutrition and I was like, we're going to do this. Um, cause I wanted to help anybody else who had ever felt like that before. Cause when I think about it, like looking back on it, you just feel so trapped in this world by yourself. Um, and you just think like, you just want to do everything in your power to change your body. And that's just not the way to do it. Sure. That's huge. One, I didn't know any of that. And I love all of that though, just because it's, it coincides even more with our mission from, from like, with like 180 impact with, uh, like dieting people from the inside out, fixing all these fucked up psychological relationships and stuff. Um, but because you've been there, you, you, there's a level of relatability that you can relate. It's like, no, I know what it's like to hate everything about yourself and willing to like do stupid shit to get on the other side. Yeah. Um, but for those that are listening, understand that Caroline's a registered dietitian, which means she is more qualified with this stuff from an education standpoint than like any quote unquote nutritionist, any bullshit certification. We were actually off camera talking about how um, some people get like, I call them certification beat offs where uh, every now and then I'll get someone who's like uh, every now and then I'll get someone who's like, well, what are, what are your certifications? And what most people don't know, even like with me, I've got a shit ton, but the thing is most people asking have no idea. Like you can go online and get cert a bullshit certification to meet whatever criteria for $25. I could be like, yeah, I'm ABC certified because it sounds cool. Anyone goes, oh, that's dope, but it's worthless. But when it gets into the world's world of uh, dietetics, where you're a registered dietitian, uh, that's a pretty big boy credential. I mean, like that's not a certification. That's like a, like a multiple year degree. I think there's a board's certification yes. process versus <laughs> like, it's the boards, not like this bullshit. It's not like a NASM certification. It's it, it, yeah. just, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're a, well, actually you know it better than I do. Talk about that. Like how big of a deal being a registered, registered dietitian is over like a nutritionist. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And a lot of people, sometimes when I tell people I'm a dietitian, they're like, what does that even mean? Um, cause they're so, used you're also to hearing... so young too. And I know <laughs> that's, that's you get, and I know you get flack for that. They're like, how are you this young? But but you're more credentialed education wise than most people. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's a really good question. Um, so the big difference between nutritionists and diet dietitians is that a nutritionist, literally anyone can say they're, they're a nutritionist. So no one needs, I mean, you can get certifications, but you could just literally say, like I always, I always give the example of my husband, like he could just say he's a nutritionist. You don't need a certification. You don't need to pass a test. There are certain, there are other like levels of things. Like there are some really solid classes and there's some that are like, I would tell anyone to stay away from because they're teaching some real messed up stuff. Uh, you can um, drop any info. You can literally say, avoid <laughs> this, avoid this, avoid this. Yeah. No, I, I <laughs> honestly, I'm trying to think if I can think any, I haven't seen any, uh, not, not off the top of my head. Things are getting better. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. But because, because there's so much stuff on the internet now, which is good and bad. So it's like people, a lot of times people get called out for their BS now because there's, there's just so much research that's accessible to a lot of people. But um, to be a dietitian, yeah, you have to go, you have to get a four-year degree. You can get it in exercise science or dietetics or um, something related to it. You can even be pre-med if you want. Um, and then you have to do an internship. And I, I, I like to call that like a residency because an internship sounds something like it's super fun and you get paid for it and all that stuff. And that's not I what it is. I'm a camp like, counselor. It's yeah, my internship. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't like the term internship, but some people's internships last like to a, a year to two years. It just kind of wow. depends on how you do it. Um, mine was just shy of a year, but it's really freaking intense. You have to do food service. You have to do 
um, like the medical side of things and you have to do community. And mine was very big on the medical side. And I did mine smack dab in the middle of COVID. So I was working on all the feeding tubes with people um, who are in the ICU and it's, it's very, very heavy stuff. So that was really tough, really tough mentally. Um, and then you have to sit for a board's exam and you have to do all that stuff before. Um, and the board's exam was, I was sweating bullets. It, it is bet. so intense. They, where I took it, they like scan your hands. Like you, you have to be who you say you are. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go through so much proof. Like they were checking behind their ears they're checking in your pockets. Wow. Um, it was super legit, but now in 2024, so just a year, you have to have your master's. I just went ahead and got my master's just because I wanted to be ahead of the curve. Um, but there's so much schooling that goes into it. And it's it's good because it's legit stuff and and food is powerful and and all of that. But that's a big difference is that is all required to be a dietitian. And now a nutritionist, you could do a two-year program and it could be great. But you don't even have to like that's like, what's crazy for those listening. You don't even have to go to school. Like, and that's the thing is when in the world of certifications and all this, it's pretty there's it's it's half of it's a scam, half of it's complete bullshit. Um, but which is why I wanted to why I was so excited whenever Caroline applied to work with us and be part of the team and and start helping coach people is because have being a registered dietitian for those that don't know is like we're talking about is a it, it's like I'm just gonna sound sound weird. It's a it's a pretty big dick move. Like it's like daddy energy just like dropped <laughs> into the room. And I was um, like, I'm gonna send it. I'm just gonna yeah, the biggest it's like, thing I can. It's it well, and that's the thing is uh in a world of fake people who are just full of shit and stuff, um, it's one of those things where like I always joke, my mailman can call them himself a nutritionist because yes. he looked at an apple. He's like, I'm a nutritionist. It's someone who looks at nutrition. But um, not to say that someone has to have an RD credential to be intelligent, yeah, for but, sure. but for those that don't know, um, like with what we're going to get into to help you guys with Caroline's education around this is like some of the highest you can get in the world of this stuff. Um, so another big difference too, is that I am held to like a standard. Like I have, I have to keep up my education and I have like a, an ethics board that people can, you know, come after you if you say something that's not scientifically right. Whereas the other sense nutritionists, like they can kind of say whatever they want and get away with it. So it's kind of scary dope. because, <laughs> 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 but because there's so many people that you can hurt, you know, that's, yeah giving sure. wrong information to people. So um, that that's a big difference too. So a lot of the times, obviously there's there's all kinds of people out there and I'm sure there's dietitianists that say some whack things, but I would say most times, like they ha you have to go through so much schooling um, to get there, so. For sure. And that's the thing, even like when, uh, yeah, absolutely. We never want to overstep any grounds or anything like that. But um, but but what's here, here's what's interesting, Caroline, is I think I told you this on, on, on your interview, like, I feel like, like 10 years ago, it wasn't that long ago, but, um, <laughs> is I don't get along with a lot of dietitians. Like one yes. of my good friends is a dietitian who's been on the show several times. My, my buddy, Matt, but otherwise, like, I don't, it makes me wonder if I'm just an asshole. Cause I don't get along with a lot of dietitians. They're like scared of protein powder. They talk about mm. carbs being bad and avoid sugar, but drink your body weight in, in milk, but then avoid Gatorade. Like, yeah. And it's some really weird off the wall shit. So for you, why do you think, is it just like anything else where, why some dietitians are great and some are degenerates? Is it why like any other industry or is there anything industry? Why do you think that's different? I think it's, it's, it really goes back to the schooling and it's people being afraid to get out of the system because the thing with school and like universities and degrees is you learn a lot. And yes, that can be super applicable and it's super helpful, but then there's also the real world. Like there's people dealing with stuff that, you know, you don't learn in school. And so you have to be able to see those differences. And it did take me a minute. Like once I got out of school, I was like very by the book. I want to do all how I was taught. But then you look back and you're, you talk to people and you talk to clients and you're like, okay, this is very different than we learned. It's not textbook by any means. And you have to just, not that you still want to do things, you know, in a very healthy way, but it's like, you kind of have to get creative and look at things a little bit differently. So there's times I had a good friend the other day asked me like, you know, what's the difference between like, or what's something that you saw in school that you thought, or you think is very different now. And it's honestly the way we do calorie deficits. Like I learned in school that to just give, you know, if someone needs to lose 30 pounds, give them a 12 to 1400 calorie diet. And now it's like, I would never in a million years do that. But that was just kind of like, that was the system. And 
I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of systems that are needed and important, but that's just a good example of like, that's what I learned, but I would never, never yeah, yeah. do that now. Well, this is one of those things too, though, where uh, I'm, I love that you said that because for those lifts listening, this is one of the traits of a really skilled coach is someone who can think critically for themselves along those lines. Like, like when to get away from the book, like, yeah, that was by the book, but it's not appropriate because people are more than, you know, black letters on white paper. You know what I mean? Like we're not robots. We're more than calories and, and workouts. This is why like we talk about, I mean, hell, she, Caroline just mentioned like relationship with food, relationship with exercise, overtraining, like, like those things matter. And, um, and it takes a really skilled coach to have the levels of critical thinking to know when to lean in, when to lean out, when to go a little bit more by the book, when that that's not a, appropriate to the person in front of us. Um, so I love that you said that that's huge. Um, so for you, um, is this where really, cause like, I feel like you're like the queen of simplicity, right? This one is why <laughs> it's why you mesh. It's why it was such a no brainer when you decided to come join the team is because I feel like you, you out the gate mesh so well with our systems and our core values and how we, how we coach. It was, it was seamless, but is this where it all came from? Like with, when you said you used to be this crazy maniac in the gym and crazy stuff on that front before you knew better, but now that you know better, is this what was the catalyst to like, nope, let's go slow. Let's go simple. Let's um, make this really practical. Is that what like catapulted this side of you? Yeah, no, that, that's a really good question. Yeah, it's definitely based off of what I went through. Of course, I kind of find myself in this really small niche or niche, however you want to say it. Um, and there's probably other people out there too, but um, I don't see it as much, but I, it's one of those things where I, so I, I wanted to lose weight and I was very extreme with things. But then I also flipped it one sense and was like, no one should try to lose weight. It's not good for you. Everything needs to be intuitive. And now I kind of find myself in this happy medium where I'm like, you can lose weight if you want to, because it's your body. You know, you can do it what you want with it. And it can be very healthy, but now to do it in a healthier way. So I kind of swung both ways. And then now I'm kind of in that middle where I'm like, I want to help people do it in a very healthy way. So the opposite, literally the opposite of what I did but I also believe that like you can change things that like, you can feel better. You can feel more comfortable in your skin. So, well, I think, weird. I think the, no, I love it. And I agree. Cause I feel like I'm the same way um, again, which is why this meshed so well from the beginning, because I feel like this may not be the most popular thing. I feel like to achieve levels of balance, you almost have to have awareness around the extremes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, uh, where, you know, you, you went from the one extreme of like, crazy psychopath diet culture, uh, almost uh, disordered eating patterns. And then you've swung the other way of like, no, you don't need to lose weight and totally intuitive. And then now you're at this middle ground. And I feel like that's how it happens. You'll see someone go from being like a bodybuilder, crazy diet culture nut job to the other extreme of like, I don't give a fuck. I, I'm going to go blow out everything. And then they then because you know where the the boundaries are, now it's easy to find this kind of middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that it partially had to do with where I fell like in with school. Cause in school, you know, I wasn't super healthy in the beginning. And then when I came out of school, it was very like some of the movements were very just like, love your body, but don't change it. Don't try to change it. Cause you should just be happy with where you're at. Um, and then I kind of came out of it, or I guess like a year, I'm not really sure time-wise what went into it, but um, it felt very quickly. Like I went from one extreme to the other to now I think I found a happy medium. Um, and I love it because I, I feel like I have found like my purpose with it and I know what I believe, why I believe it. And I've seen so many people now have such amazing success with it to where they feel like that they can, they can hit their goals, but they, they're also not like ruled by it. And they, you know, they don't wake up every day thinking about like, I have to eat as little as possible. So it's a very very happy medium, I should say. <laughs> well, and, and that's how it should be. I think um, like that balance and harmony dichotomy, right? Which is again, why like this has worked so well since day one. Um, so from your perspective, uh, so from your perspective, just to, um, to get everything across well for those that are still living in the 1960s with their nutrition, I, I would love to hear you touch on your perspective now that everyone knows that you have like 
this, like all the education and all that, those things, why we need carbs, why we need to eat more. Those are the two. I, I, I'm i shocked. I still get those every day in my DMs that people are still still scared to eat carbs and they're scared shitless to, to eat more, do a re- reverse diet, diet break, maintenance period, whatever you want to call it. And, and even in, our, in the coaching program, we do this every day, right? People, we, very few people go right into fat loss unless they're eating like 8,000 calories a day. We always have to get that built up, but why is that so important and why should people not worry about getting fat from it? Yeah, that's a good question. So there's a couple ways I could go from, I would say from a scientific point of view, like once I learned how cells actually work in our body, that's what changed everything for me. Like every single cell needs glucose, like the way that it takes in energy and it uses to, you know, allow you to breathe, allow you to walk, allow you your brain to function. So when I learned that specifically, it was very mind blowing. Cause I'm like, wow, I actually need sugar because at the end of it, like sugar all, all breaks down to glucose. So whether you get that from, you know, cake or whether you get that from things like strawberries, obviously there's some differences in there as far as nutrients go. But once I learned kind of that scientific aspect of it, I was like, this is a game changer because this is what everyone needs to know. Like you are designed, I forget who said this, so who to give credit for, but if, if we were meant to make our own food, like plants, like photosynthesis, then we would do that, but we don't, we need to take in food. That's, that's why there's macronutrients, you know, everything serves a purpose in our body. Um, and we don't create our food. We, we need it to, to live. And I always tell clients too, like we have taste buds for a reason, whether where you believe that comes from, like we are meant to enjoy food or else we would just eat tasteless nothing every day. So it's kind of a good mix, a good scientific mix of like we were designed to eat things to sustain life. And we're also meant to enjoy them. I believe at least. I agree. I agree with you. I have a really fucked up analogy that's really inappropriate, but because it's me, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> um, it's why I tell like, uh, I always m- joke that when people, when girls call guys pigs because guys are all they want is sex, we don't have an organ that's specifically only for pleasure. Girls do. It's like mm-hmm. the, the clitoris is that's only true. for pleasure. Like that doesn't do anything else. You can get pregnant without nutting, right? Like for a girl, <laughs> but they, the girls have an organ that is only for pleasure, right? But this is why I, I haven't used that analogy in a, a while with if you weren't supposed to enjoy food, you wouldn't have taste buds. I love it. And I mm-hmm. haven't used it in a really long time. I say um, probably every day and my clients probably hate me because of it. Well, so here's one I, I'd love for you to touch on. And this is one of my pet peeves. I fucking hate it because right around, right around this part in the conversation, a lot of professionals say the the argument is like, well, carbs aren't essential, so we don't need them. Mm. Um, I have a whole nother argument for that, but, um, but what are your thoughts when someone says, well, yeah, but we don't need carbs because they're not essential. That's a good question. So like I was saying earlier, carbs break down to glucose, right? And what runs on glucose, your muscles in order to move, you need glucose. Like that's what fuels them. And your brain also runs on carbs too. So it's usually Like what I do a lot of the times when people bring those up, obviously, like I want them to feel heard. I understand that it's scary. And we've been taught these really messed up things by diet culture that like carbs make you fat and things like that. But then when I love to explain some of the science, because I think that's what takes some of the emotion out of it. You just realize, okay, this is what, this is how we are designed as humans and how our body operates. Therefore, this is what I need. Yes, there are certain things that you can do to you know, hit those goals that you won. And there's a way that you can change kind of your macros and things like that. But when it comes down to the science, like that's why, why do you think when people go on a keto diet, they get the keto flu? Like that, that is so messed up that you literally get sick off of a diet. Like that is so messed up. And I understand anyone who's tried it because it is very convincing. Like I've, I've tried it myself like in college. Um, but that, that is so messed up in itself that you get sick. I could talk about that forever, but, um, yeah, as far as carbs go, like I think, and you could say you could do that with really any nutrient, like when it boils down to it, I think the science is super powerful because, um, it's a, it's very just like black and white. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my thing. When someone, this is why I hate the argument when people say, well, carbs aren't essential for survival. 
We, and that's the problem when they, they say carbs aren't essential. I go, because they're talking about forced survival. But imagine if we did that through the lens of everything. There's a lot of things that aren't essential for survival. I know people without legs because they're not essentials for survival. We don't need two kidneys. We don't need eyesight. We, um, every person I know who says carbs aren't essential, they have TVs in their house. They have air conditioning. <laughs> they have paint on their walls. They have things that make their house feel like a home. They have dogs. All yeah. these things, those aren't essential for survival, but just because something isn't essential for survival doesn't mean it's not okay to have it and enjoy it because it makes the quality of your life better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah for sure. Your body can make, that's what's really cool about our bodies because it can make sugar, like the way that it breaks things down. Like you can, it can make, you know, glucose and right. kind of, and a protein. Into that too. <laughs> yeah. Do what would you say? When I said like, it's why when people tell oh. me that, 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 sh- uh, sugar's bad and they just eat all protein. I'm like, do you realize your body can turn protein into glucose? Yeah. And you don't, yeah. you don't want it to do that. That is not yeah, you, optimal. You don't. <laughs> no, it's not a good but idea. You don't want it to break down your muscles into, into sugar, but yeah. So you, can you create it? Absolutely. But do you want to do that? Is it, does it make you feel good? Right. No, generally yeah. no, it's not optimal. That's a big difference is can you do it? Yes. But is it healthy for you? Probably not. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I'd love to hear, let me hear you touch on this then. So the idea of, um, like you said, when you were starting out before you knew better, you were just trying to eat as little as possible to make this happen. But now the way that we coach our philosophy is let's see how much you can get away with eating while still reaching your goals. Why is it important to eat as much as you can while losing weight versus eating as little as possible? Because that's, what's going to make it sustainable as, as simple as it is. That's, like no one likes to be starving, right? That is a very miserable way to lose weight and it doesn't last. Yes, you can, you could probably eat a 1200 calorie diet for some time. I mean, everyone's different. Some people can do it for a month. Some people could do it for a year, but is that what you want to be doing for the rest of your life? Chances are no. So at the end of the day, it's like you, you kind of have to pick, you know, what you want, what you want your quality of life to be. So if you want to do that forever, sure, go for it. But you probably will be miserable. You'll probably be hangry. You'll probably be tired. You're probably going to have no sex drive. Like you're probably going to have brain fog. Um, but yeah, I kind of forgot where the question was. No, going. no, no. That's cool. And, no, to, piggy, to piggyback on that though. And then all of a sudden, no one's willpower is that strong. We need mm-hmm. willpower the most when we have it the least. And if someone goes, no, I want to lose weight that bad, I'm willing to suffer and deprive and starve and my like have the worst quality of life ever, everyone breaks. You're not fucking yeah. superhuman. Everyone's going to go f- get, do that for six months and go, it's not worth it. So even from a fat loss perspective, it is not a good idea. Even if you can lose more weight now, it's just a terrible idea. Yeah. There's two sides of that too. Like scientifically, like I was saying earlier, like it is hard on your metabolism. You know, you're not going to have energy. It affects those. But then it also, there's an emotional side of it where do you feel like you can go out to front, out to, out to dinner with your friends? Do you feel like you can have a glass of wine or do you feel like you can only eat like once a day? So there's, there's two sides to it. There's how it affects your body and then also how it affects your mental health. Yeah. I, I, uh, I just actually, ironically, um, Uh, I know it'll be different at the time of this being published, but I just got off a call like an hour ago, right before this with someone who um, I just accepted into into coaching. And I was asking her this question because she struggled with all the same things. I won't mention her, but I said, what's this costing you in your life right now? And she rattled off everything important to her. She goes, I can't go out with my friends. Uh, I'm depressed all the time. I hate the way I feel. I'm avoiding pictures, which means you're avoiding the experiences that make people want to take the pictures. And all these things she rattled off, she's like, I don't, I can't do on date night. I can't do anything. And I said, so it sounds like this is costing you everything life is about. I would argue life. If someone had to say, what's life about is, is, is experiences, right? Like mm-hmm. I know everyone's belief yeah. systems are different, but at the end of the day, we all want to experience, have experiences in our life, whether that be family, friends, trips, travel, um, nice things, ha- happiness in general is an experience. But if everything you love and cherish the most, you can't get those experiences and it's costing you those, well, then you being trapped by this and by diet culture and all this bullshit is literally costing you your quality of life. And we are just a flash in the pan in terms of our life lives here on earth here for like 70 to to 90 years. And, uh, and blah, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. And why, why would you not want to eat as much as possible and still lose weight? Other than it not being fast, 
Like right. that to me sounds like the best thing ever, right? Yeah. Hitting your goals while still being able to eat with your friends and yeah. go out on date night and enjoy cake on your birthday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think a conversation I know I've had with clients before, and I think the rest of the team has as well is there's this level of giving yourself permission to let it be slow. Like we're, we all have this like inherent, I have to do it fast because of diet culture and being targeted with Facebook ads and the magazines at the checkout at Walmart and all these things. And we have this inherent like speed, but I think a big piece of this is we, if you're struggling, you need to give yourself permission. Like, Hey, it's okay to, to take a little bit longer and enjoy the ride. Actually, this was something that I got from my mentor. Cause, um, a lot of the strategies to be successful in weight loss is to be successful in business or any success area. And I asked him, I go, where's the line? I go like, I said, we listened to this per one person on how to be successful. And he goes, live like you're, you're poor, eat ramen every day, even if you have a million dollars in your bank account, so you can reinvest all of it. Hmm. And, and that's what he did. He was literally making like millions of dollars a month. And he was living in a house with like six other dudes eating ramen, yeah. living like he living off of like 10 grand a year while he was a millionaire. Wow. And I asked my mentor and I said, I said, how do you feel about that? And he goes, he's right. That's how you, that's how you get wealthy as fast as possible. And I said, you just bought a McLaren and have like $150,000 in watches and bought your third house. So where's that for you? And he goes, because my mentor is astronomically successful. And he said, this was so, it was, this was a pivotal moment for me. He said, I'm okay taking a little bit longer, enjoying the ride more. I love that. That was a really big defining moment for me because I was, I, I was in that place of like, I have to deprive as much as I can to get to this result as fast as possible. But then it, it hit me in that moment. I go, I think I am okay taking a little bit longer, like a couple years longer, but to enjoy the ride so much more. And I think it's the same thing here in weight loss is when, whoever is listening to this is 90, they're not going to care whether it took them six months or 12 months or 12 months or 18 months, but you are going to care as you didn't do this back and forth till you were 90. Yeah, absolutely. That's huge. Why do you, why do you think people do that? Why do you think people are in such a rush? I think it's, to me, it's pretty black and white. Like people just don't want to wait. Like they, they genuinely just want to show up, you know, a month later and be a hundred less pounds. Like they, they just want it to be overnight, just a really quick fix. Um, because it takes hard freaking work. Yeah. <laughs> People don't want to put in the work. Mm -hmm. They, they want the result, but they don't want to put in, or they're scared too. Like it is really scary. The whole process is scary. You know, working on yourself, like we is like the foundation of our program, like finding and dealing with those feelings is, is really hard and scary. Um, you know, dealing with all of your inner child work and, and maybe just I, what, something I've been talking about with clients recently too is like just family things, like family things that you grew up with, like that your parents would say to you, you know, society would tell you, maybe it was your friends at school, maybe you got bullied for something. Um, it's, you have to deal with all of that if you actually want to fix, fix the, all the other stuff. So um, I think some people just don't, just don't want to do it. And I understand it. So it always comes from a place of understanding. Like I understand that they're scared of it. Um, but at what, at what point do you, do you actually want change? This is the epitome of why the magic is the diet is dieting from the inside out. Like for those listening, think about all the shit Caroline just said. She didn't once mention calories. She didn't once mention like workouts, but she's talking about your relationship with food, being bullied as a kid, your parents teaching you when you were little around, like, like the one I hear the most is mom took me in my first Weight Watchers meeting at 11, like mm -hmm. shit like that. This yeah. is what we have to unpack to really get on the other side. Um, I had, again, I had that same call, uh, that I was telling, talking about earlier. I, I asked, uh, I asked this woman, I said, cause she had like 50 pounds to lose. And I said, if I could snap my fingers and the weight came off, would you be good? Would it stay off? And she went, no. Yeah. And it's because of all this other shit. So my thing is instead of white knuckling through weight loss, why don't we just fix all this other shit? And then weight loss happens as kind of a byproduct, you know? 100%. Yeah. But I think, I think it's just scary. I mean, dealing with emotions and your inner child is, is hard, but once you do it, it's just, it's beautiful how it can bleed into other things. So even like not just weight loss, um, or not just, you know, some of those, the, um, yeah, like body image and things like that. It can yeah. bleed into, I mean, Ashley's talked about it a lot, just like yeah. her relationship with her husband and things. So yeah. it's crazy how much, um, it turns into like, I have a, I have one of my clients who's a college student, you know, she, we talked about working on your, 
um, like mindset and things as far as like nutrition and fitness. And she's like, it's helped me and become a better student. Like the way that it bleeds into other things is, is just buck wild and it's super cool, but it's just things you would never think of. Um, so it's really, it's really cool when that happens, but. Well, it's because you're the, everyone listening, you're the foundation of everything in your life. You're the foundation of your marriage. You're the foundation of the college student's case, her school. You're the foundation of your household energy. You're the foundation of your work. We're the foundation of everything we touch. So when we improve us by 20%, everything else gets improved by 20%, Hmm. let alone like astronomically more. I've always said, I've said it for years. If you stay the same you mentally and only, or I'm sorry, if you stay the same you and only lose weight, you did it wrong. Yeah. But when you lose weight because you're literally becoming a different person at a character trait level, everything in your life changes and you get, and you lose some weight along the way. It's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. It's like a weird byproduct, but then, and then people join the program to lose weight. But then afterwards they're like, Oh, all this happened. My relationship with food is better. My relationship with my family is better. Oh yeah. And I, and I kind of lost some weight. It's yeah. just like, it totally, <laughs> like it totally shifts priorities. Not that mm-hmm. that still can't be a priority. It's, it's cool when you, when you hit your goals and things like that, but it's just very different how people's mindset sets shift. Well, it, it becomes the, it, it's one of the first uh, influences I had in like the success world. His name was Bob Proctor. He said the goal, or he goes, the result should never be the goal. The result should be a side effect of the goal of you becoming a different version of yourself. Identity yeah. 101. So it's why when people say, how do I lose weight? That's wrong. It's who do I have to become who loses weight? Mm. And it's an identity shift because when you yeah. become a different quality and a different level person, you get what they get. Right. Imagine, imagine like a, I gave an example in an email I wrote today uh, of a, of a kid who wants to be an all-star football player, but he says, I want to be an all-star, but he skips practice. He doesn't work out. He doesn't watch film. It's like, he's not doing, he's not doing the things all-star players do. But if he said, how do I become an all, how do I, what, who do I have to become? Who's an all-star? Oh, I have to become a person who watches film. I have to become a person who shows up. Who's the first on the field, last to leave. And then when you shift your identity, the actions take care of themselves and the results are a side effect. And that's how we create permanent change. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the small things that you do every day. Yeah. I'll preach habits until I die. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, along those lines, um, what do you think are some of the components for having habits stick? Because everyone's like, I want to start getting up early and they don't, or I want to start getting my workout in or tracking my calories or walking more, whatever, because you're the habit queen. How do you, or well, let me take a, let me take a step back. What are some of the traits and strategies you have for keeping habits to stick. Mm. I butchered how I worded that. You get what I'm saying. I literally butchered <laughs> yeah. no, the I fuck out of that. <laughs> like third grade English over here. What the fuck is wrong with me? That happens to me on client calls all the time. You're like thinking ahead of like you speaking so then you can't, you can't form the words. But um, yeah, no, really good question. I think it's one delayed gratification because it's like you're not going to just become that person overnight. And just knowing that and accepting it is literally step one. Like you have to know that you're not going to, you know, wake up, maybe you wake up at 11 AM and you want to wake up at 5 30. You want to become one of those crazy 5 30 in the morning people. <laughs> and just knowing that you're not going to do that, I think is just literally the first step, just accepting that is not going to happen. Um, can you do it once? Absolutely. You could wake up the next day. Will you probably be miserable? Yes. Because anyone who, you know, changes that drastic of a, of a habit really quickly is probably not going to enjoy it. But so accepting that I think is the first step. And then it's been being willing to make very, very small steps closer to that goal. So you still have that goal, but what are the small little daily things that you can do to get you there? So even if you wake up 15 minutes earlier every day, like that is the most, that is the tiniest thing. I mean, I guess you could do five minutes, but that probably is not realistic, but 15 to 30 minutes earlier, Maybe you do that for like a month. So being okay with that, I think is huge. Being okay with those very small steps. But it's amazing how much you can actually change by taking those small little changes and how much they add up in just like big picture at the end of the maybe six months or a year. But yeah, that's that's the first step. What do you think? Okay, I love that and I agree with you. Usually right about now, the question that pops up out of a trigger for most people is, um, is they don't think it's big and they're like, no, 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 I have to make it bigger. I have to, that's going to take too long. Um, it's not Mm. enough. That's usually what comes up right about now is when people go, it's not enough. So I know my opinion on it, but I'm curious, what would your response be? I feel like it's kind of that, some of that tough love where you have to say, yeah, 
well, how bad do you want it? Like, how bad do you want it to stick? Yeah. Because, yeah, like I said, you could do it maybe for a week. You could wake up at 530. But, like, do you really think that that's going to last you, you know, the rest of your life? Generally, no. Like, that sounds miserable to me. And Mm -hmm. I'm a morning person. (laughs) Right. So, it's like, do you you actually want it to be permanent in your life? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really hard question to answer because people want to say yes, but... Do you think that that's realistic? I would say most people, if they're truly honest with themselves, they would say no. Like, I know I'm not going to do that. Like, yes, I can set the goal, but I know I'm not going to do that. Now, do I know I can wake up a half an hour early? Absolutely. That I know I can do. But the rest of it, I don't know. Well, and I, my thought is if they can't, if someone can't do something small, how the hell can they do something big? Like, like yes, in getting an earlier one. analogy, you're like, yeah. you say, just wake up 30 minutes early. And they're like, no, I got to wake up three hours early. It's like, bro, if you can't do 30 minutes, what the, how the fuck do you think you're going <laughs> to yeah. um, wake up three hours or in, in weight loss? The, the biggest one that gets me is when someone's adherence sucks on a simple plan, they want to, they want to naturally make it more. It's like, they can't get to the gym three days a week. They're like, I obviously don't want it bad enough. Let's go five. I'm like, whoa. Karen, let's, let's slow down. Or if someone can't adhere to, let's say 1800 calories, they're like, Oh, 1200. I go, bro, (laughs) wait a second. Yes. We're going the wrong way. (laughs) 100. And that's the same too, with like all the habits you want to change. So say you want to change your, how much you eat, um, your exercise, your sleep journaling. Say you want to change all of those things, but you can't do one. You can't do like two of them. What makes you think you can change all of them. And that's not, I think some people get offended by that. That is not at all meant to be I love offensive. offending people. I love <laughs> it. It tells me we're doing the, uh, to be honest, it tells us we're doing the right thing though. Yeah. You know, but I, when I usually, when I say that to someone, I'm like, it is, it's just a human nature thing. Like yeah. we get overwhelmed and we quit. So I like to take some of the emotion out of it. Cause I'm like, it is just, if you can do this for, you know, a month, two months, then absolutely let's add something on to that. But if you know that you can do this, why not just do it and prove it to yourself? Like that's a, such an amazing feeling when you do something that you set your mind to. So if you can, if you can, if you can't do those five habits, like what makes you think that you can change? Or if you can't do the two habits, what makes you think you can change like your whole life? Mm-hmm. What's um I, I mentioned this on a different podcast and then uh, we actually ended up making a clip out of it. Um, but who knows, David might do it again. I don't know. But uh, I was at a conference of some killer entrepreneurs. It was an entrepreneurship conference and nothing but savages. So it's like, why the fuck was I there? But I was there anyway. Um, Jesse Itzler was a speaker. Jesse is a psychopath. He hired like David Goggins to live with him, to teach him mental toughness, like that wow. kind of psychopath. Jesse runs like Jesse built like, for those listening, like Jesse built a company, sold it to Warren Buffett, built another company, sold it to Coca-Cola and runs ultra marathons and then invites guys like David Goggins to live with him and then goes, does like Wim Hof exercises with Wim Hof out in like the Arctic. So Jesse's a, a psychopath. But what's interesting is he, a piece on his, at, at the conference, he was talking about making habits stick. And mind you, he is a psychopath. So knowing those traits about Jesse, you'd probably think he's going to be an extremist like you got to want it all or nothing. Go big or go home. No, no, no. Jesse said, I'm a big fan of a habit of the month. He goes, if you have a habit of the month, you'll have 12 new habits at the end of the year. He goes, and there's a thousand people in the room. He said, raise your hand. If you've added 12 new habits to to this last year, not a hand went up. He said six, who's got six new habits. Not a hand went up three, three new habits. And like, couple hands went up and he goes, this is the problem because you guys go to set all these like 17 habits in month one, can't do it, fall off. And then you suck at life versus like a mad. Can you imagine if in the coaching program, people just signed up, they just invested and we're like month one water (laughs) month two protein and water. That's it. Month three protein, water calorie deficit. I want a refund, right? That That's what would happen. Month four, yeah. walk. <laughs> Month five, uh, a little more protein. But you know what would happen, truthfully? Like, to be honest, the co- that's not exactly for those that don't know how the coaching program works, but we model it similar to that where we're not adding crazy amounts of habits, but it's not that slow and that not that monotonous. But truthfully, that would generate the best results ever. By the end of a year, you would have 12 new habits that turned you into a new human. So it's the same thing in my view. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Yeah, that would be. We'd cause cause quite a stir. 
We, I, to be honest, we, we are. I mean, some people, some some people who like already get upset when they, we we don't let them change seventeen new habits in the first month, and we have that come to Jesus conversation. But it's uh, because I'm a I'm a big expectations person. So if someone gets like for those listening, when it comes to this, it's everything about coaching's full transparency. So when someone signs up for coaching, um, on the call, you get to ask all the questions. Then upon onboarding, you get this big ass PDF that you have to read all of it. I have a giant video in there explaining it's a huge long video from me. Um, and you have to watch it before we even start coaching to make sure expectations are on point and you're on the same page. Like, so I don't, people think we're just like tricking them or whatever. Um, but, (laughs) but, but, but but truthfully though, I would argue if someone has an issue with it, uh, but your results suck. Yeah. Right. Like someone may say like we've had people who would like get, they want to go faster. And I'm like, bro, you, you weigh a hundred pounds over what you want to weigh your way. Obviously this sounds bad, but it's like your way obviously isn't working. This extremism bullshit obviously isn't serving you. The all or nothing obviously isn't the way to go for you. Why don't we do something that is proven to work for you? Yeah. The results suck or they don't, they don't stick with it. Like they don't stay. Yeah. Why do you think people defend a system that's only hurt them so much? I've always wondered this when people are like, no, Mm -hmm. it's, I'm an all or nothing person. Like, bro, you're still fat. Like five years later, you're obviously, it's obviously not working. Maybe we should let that go. You know, that may sound harsh or someone's like, no, keto is it. Carbs are bad. I'm like, bro, you've been battling the same 10 pounds for 10 years. Maybe carbs aren't the issue. Like, why do you think people do that? I think because it's so, it sounds so simple. Like people are looking for an answer. They want that to be the answer. Like they, they think that they've solved the problem and find, found like the golden star, the key to success when you can blame something like carbs. Like if that, if that was it, then it, you know, it would change their whole life. So I think people really just want the very simple answer. And I don't blame them. Like we all want that too. But I think it's, it's just, it's easier if, if carbs are to blame. Like if they have something to blame, I think that that's the easy way out. Oof, that's so good. But no one, like, <laughs> I think about half the listeners just like got kicked in the stomach right now. Um, but that's good. I love it. They, but, but I mean, it goes back to, to um, when it's something else, it's not our fault because ignorance is bliss. It's like when someone says I'm an all or nothing person, it's because you're validating your shitty behavior. That's why there's like a new diet every year or so. Because they've everyone's found the secret answer, and it's finally it's finally it. It's time to to rock everybody's world, but it doesn't stick. I'm scared. I'm scared for the low protein diet. Hopefully, that never comes around. But we've done like low carb, low fat. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, that doesn't happen. So, to be honest, if you zoom out a little bit, I'm sure I'm curious your thoughts on this. Uh, any new diet that comes through is a repurposed old diet. So like, oh, for example, absolutely. right now it's keto, but that used to be the meat and cheese diet. Or yeah. I think what we call fasting, I could be wrong, but back in the day it was called like the warrior diet or, mm. um, or the Atkins uh, diet. Atkins is just a low carb diet or, yeah. um, uh, my favorite like Octavia is just, uh, Jenny Craig with, or, or Nutrisystem with an eating disorder. You know, Oof, that one it's, a bad one. Oh my gosh. I th- I think for those listening, Octavia is like all the trendy diets suck. I think Octavia is in the the worst three. It's powders, right? You're eating like powdered meals. Um, either that, like their 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 shitty products and their shitty food. But here's what's really fucked up. Not only like because their big selling point is uh yeah. is you just eat our meals and you don't have to count anything. Well, it's because they put everyone that comes into their program at 800 calories a day yeah. and only their food and their food's fucking expensive. And it tastes like shit, I'm told, from like everyone on the internet. But yeah. I had a client, not a client, I had a lady message me and she told me I could talk about this. Her husband is a food scientist or a food chemist who has the Octavia contract. And he says there is like in their like mashed potatoes, there's like two potato flakes, enough to legally say there's potatoes, but the rest is just trash. But he's the food chemist or the food scientist that has the Octavia contract. And the cool thing is like, I have no ties to anything, so I can talk shit all I want. So, um, but. I think that's the big difference too of like looking at diets. Like, is that something you have to do for the rest of your life? Like things like that. Like, do they promise you like, oh, you're going to do this and you're going to be fine. I think that's what is so different with our program. And I tell people all the time, like, we don't want you to be here forever. We want to provide you you with the tools to then just like kill it the rest of your life and, you know, help people around you and all that. But those other programs, like 
no offense to Weight Watchers, but like you have a, you can do like a lifetime program with them. Like that yeah. should be a huge red flag in itself. Like if you are on it for the rest of your life, then they're not, they're not teaching you sustainability. No, I, uh, I got some flack because I like went on this big bender of shit talking weight watchers. Cause it's terrible just cause you'll hear some coaches talk about how, um, it's the closest to calorie deficit and calorie tracking. So it's fine. But they teach people to binge eat because of the free food mentality. The, the, the point system does not correlate to calories at all. They're weird algorithm, but then a 300 calorie muffin, that is a fraction of your calorie deficit that day would take up over half your point. So you'll eat 800 calories a day, then cause uh, a, ter- a, ter- a terrible relationship with food. Cause you're scared of muffins now. Yeah. And then, uh, and I, and it's every person that I've ever known with weight watchers. They, 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 when they're counting points, they're good, but when they're not counting points, they gain all their weight back. And it's like, yeah. no, I'm back on my points again. Well, that's, it's they're keeping you trapped. So, yeah. And it's just like, if you really think about the points in itself, it's not at all helping you with re- your relationship with food. Like if you're thinking of things as like free points, that in itself should be a red flag. Cause you, you shouldn't be like, Oh, I can eat my whole meal could be vegetables and it's zero points. Therefore it's probably zero calories. And you're not like truly understanding the science behind it. You're just thinking, as few points as possible. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, that would just, it, it does not work on your relationship with food by any means. I do think they have, they've improved, but I think they've kind of had to because diet culture stuff calls people out now. <laughs> so I right. do think they have improved, but yeah. um, there's still, yeah, the, just the whole lifetime program yeah. thing. It's, a, it, it's interesting to say the least, but um, all right. Well, well so to, we'll start wrapping up a little bit. I can't believe okay. it's been almost an hour already. Um, oh, wow. uh, I know it. I know it. Um, and, and just in your, uh, your apartment dude hasn't come yet. So no, <laughs> worked out. I thought I was going right. to get scared the crap out of me. Well, we're not over yet. So who knows? Uh, <laughs> so we were talking off camera. Uh, Caroline is waiting on like a, a, a maintenance service tech of some sort to, or a delivery to come to her apartment. Um, and apparently she has the world's like most alarm doorbell. They ever. put a doorbell in an apartment complex. So I don't know if anyone out there has had that, but I thought that was so bizarre. Yeah, I don't know if it's a California funny. thing, but maybe um, doorbells are, yeah, apartment. <laughs> who wants that? But right? That's we're funny. getting those like electric locks that you can okay. access with your phone. And to be honest, that sounds terrifying to me because I feel like with technology and hacking these days, no one hack into my apartment, please. <laughs> right. I mean, you think like, hotels use it. I mean, that's true. Easy, yeah. But, but that's not your place of living. You're, where yeah, you that's keep true. all your, your prized possessions. But right. Right. That's funny. Who knows? Well, we won't tell Caroline's address for the stalkers there you go. that listen to the show. I moved to California. So find me in the that's state. Right. <laughs> Bet, motherfucker. Um, so a couple last minute questions. What is your, I love asking this. What's your favorite part about coaching? Everyone's answer is different, but like what for you what do you love most about coaching? I think just, and this is going to sound so broad, but I really think it's just like helping people enjoy life and enjoy like their quality of life just goes up because they can actually go out to eat with their friends. And, you know, like I said, have a glass of wine, enjoy cake on their birthday, you know, go on date nights. That is what really like fills my cup for me. Like when I see that in check-ins, I love helping people lose weight. I think it's awesome. But that's not like that's just cool. It's just like you said, kind of a side effect of things. But when people are genuinely happy at the end of it, that's where I'm like I'm crying in our last yeah. check because I'm so <laughs> proud of them yeah. and just happy that they're they're enjoying their life. So well, I think that's more of what it's about because you, because I, I pl- plenty of people that I'm sure that's listening have lost the weight, but mm-hmm. then they've been in what I call more of a, a mental incarceration where they're like, yeah. oh, I can't go have pizza with my boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. I would love to go hang out with whatever and now I can't, or I want to go on that vacation, but I'm having a panic attack on the flight because I'm afraid I'm going to gain my weight back. You probably Um, said this before too, though, but like when you get to the end of like a client's journey with, you know, with their coach, whether it's six months, 12 months, a year, if all they've done is lose weight, then we didn't, we didn't do our job and what we're supposed to. Cause that's not, I mean, we've had, I've had clients who I was just telling someone the other day, like their goal when they started was to lose weight. But by the end, it was like, that wasn't even their goal anymore. It was just to be healthier, just to be happier. Um, so it's like totally shifted their mindset. And then ironically, they lose more weight than ever. Yeah. <laughs> that's always the key. Yeah. But I, I, I'm always worried people when they hear that, they're like, oh, but I'm going to gain all this weight. It's like, no, 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 no. When you become, when you become 
a higher quality, higher energetic, higher vibrational person that has uh, these other goals. Weight loss happens as a byproduct. I get why most people are scared. Yes. If they're not like most people believe if they do not have the accelerator down on weight loss, they're going to turn into like Jabba the Hutt. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's not like that. And because then the beautiful part is when they shift that perspective and the weight comes off, it never comes back on. So, yeah, no, that's, that's a good side note. Cause we definitely do have people who are very successful <laughs> with the weight loss for sure. But I think it just, it shifts like kind of priorities and like, I definitely, the way you go about it. So someone's like, I've, I have say I wanted to lose 50 pounds and I've lost 25, which is still incredible. They're like, now I'm okay with doing that slowly. Like at the beginning, I didn't want to do that slowly, but now I'm okay with it. And I see why, because I'm eating as much as I can eat. I'm feeling mm -hmm. full, but I'm still seeing results. So yeah. When it becomes a side effect is really cool because, because then it's, then you're not trying. Like imagine it's like if, if those listening, if your boss just said, Hey, I want you to do this and you're going to make a bunch of money as a side effect without even trying. So I, I like I created this guide. Uh, we'll throw it in the in the in the description uh, since I'm bringing it up. I call it accidental fat loss because <laughs> I love that. Yeah, well, because everyone's like, I would love to lose weight on an accident. It's because it was is what it is. It's it's a guide to lose weight without tracking calories. Yeah. But when you start becoming more mindful around what you're eating, put certain boundaries up in certain places, and you become recognizing of your fullness cues, you're not trying to lose weight. But you put some stuff in place that made weight loss happen on an accident. That's all we're talking about here is making it where it just happens as a byproduct, which is cool as fuck. So yeah. And just like kind of just bettering yourself as a human. Like say you get a new client and they want to lose weight. That's awesome. I'll help you with that. But let's just focus on your habits and see what happens. And that's usually where um, they end up getting the results they want. But that they just took their focus off of it. They took their focus off of just just losing weight. And they're like, I'm going to just focus on being a better version of myself and then the weight comes off. It, it's funny when you stop chasing, you start receiving. A mentor yep. of mine like says that a lot. Um, because when you when you're chasing and desperate, the th the thing you're going after it runs from you. Weight loss, yep. money, relationships, getting laid. It, it doesn't matter what it is. But the more you're like de out of desperation chasing it, the more the thing runs away from you. Yeah, no, that's really good. Well, uh, this has been fucking killer. Caroline, where can people? I know you've been posting more content on social lately. So where can people find you on the social? Good question. My main form would be Instagram. So I think I'm just Caroline underscore dietitian. Dope. We'll make sure to put that in the show notes and things like that. And then uh, I'll, I'll talk about this more in the outro. Um, but if you are listening to this and really like uh, the, the, the concept of what we've been talking about and would like the potential to work with Caroline one on one. Um, there's, uh, some links below some ways you can apply for coaching. And then if we think it's a good idea, we think it's a good fit, then we can talk about the possibility of what that would look like. But, um, but you could absolutely like, if you heard this and really resonated, you could request Caroline. So, um, and go from there. So, which would be pretty cool, but we'll talk about that more in the outro. Uh, any final thoughts? No, no, I'm excited to be here. Love the team. I love it. The ha Hamilton train team is amazing. So, That's right. People probably already know that based off, <laughs> based right. off your podcast, but there we go. we're all so different, but we fit together beautifully like a little yep. puzzle. There's yep. my cheesy, um, my cheesy fact. Yeah. Well, and if you guys want to hear like kind of the, how we kind of mesh, if, if you're nerdy like that, we've been doing, we did, we started last month, the first of um, these round table events where, um, where it's me and the entire coaching staff comes on and I interview all of them at once. It's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, it resonates so well, we're going to start doing them way more frequently. So depending on when this comes out, uh, we're doing one on May the 4th. I'm not sure when this is going to air compared to that. But if you're listening to this after May the 4th, there will be a replay. So um, the, the, that those will be held in the Fat Loss Simplified group, which there is a link below for that. So um, cool. Well, Caroline, thank you so much. I appreciate you. This has been really good. Of course. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And we're back. Thank you so much for sticking around. I really, really appreciate it. This has been a really fun interview with Caroline, and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. If you stuck around this long, I know you did. Like It'd be impossible for you to not unless you were just not even paying attention. But like I said, mentioned uh, towards the end of it, if you are listening to this and you're tired of the mental bandwidth of gaining, losing, gaining, losing, if you're tired of trying to figure it out, if you've failed more times than you can count and you're feeling lost and you're feeling defeated or almost like giving up or almost like your situation is permanent. Almost like, like, uh, there's no hope for me. Like, I'm just going to be stuck this way. 
really reach out for real. If you want a chance also at working with Caroline, that's the cool thing. If you really resonated with her story and how we coach and just her vibe, um, you can actually request to work with Caroline inside our coaching program. Now there's nowhere on the internet you can go and just sign up for our coaching program because out the gate, we have to make sure you're the right kind of person. And this is a good fit. We do not work with, um, just anyone with a credit card. We want to make sure that it's, it's the right fit and that you have all your questions answered and all of those kind of things. So if you want to apply for coaching, um, there's actually a link below. You can schedule your call to chat with uh, my team. That way we can make sure this is the right fit. And if it is, then we can go and talk about options from there. Um, and you can request Caroline if you really like this episode, but because you are coming from the podcast, uh, if you do get accepted into coaching, I I am giving away a whole lot of free shit completely for free just because you're coming from the show. But otherwise, that's it. I really appreciate you being here. Um, if uh, you're new around here as well, be sure and check out the other resources I have for you down in the description. We have, uh, if you don't have a home base, you'll want to join my Fat Loss Simplified Facebook group because I get it. This journey going by yourself is hard. Like we were talking about, um, chances are your husband doesn't get it. Your, your, uh, your kids don't get it. Your friends make fun of you. And it's just, you may feel alone. And if that's not you, awesome. But the majority of people feel like that and you need a home base. It's pivotal to your success. So I have a home base I built inside a Facebook community. It's beautiful. Um, you're going to get the love and the support and the help that you need completely for free. So be sure and go join that below. If you aren't reg or if you aren't uh, registered, if you aren't, um, subscribe to the YouTube, definitely go check that out. This podcast is on there. We, we put all the podcasts on YouTube now. So that way, if you'd rather watch your interviews, Joe Rogan style, um, you can do that. And then I'm trying to think what else, uh, if you, and if you're newer to just like losing weight in general, or aren't quite sure where to start, or you just have a lot of questions, well, number one, you can always reach out. But number two, um, you should go through my fat loss checklist. It's a five day mini course. It's all through your email and it will change your life. I've had tens of thousands of people go through it and, it's, it's pretty incredible. I'm really proud of it. And it's, it's really helpful and it will change your entire perspective around sustainable weight loss. So, um, that is it, my friend. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Be sure and subscribe if you have not already. Um, and one thing we are doing with the episodes, um, where I'm going to be playing with now is giving away, doing some giveaways, uh, for reviews. So if you do me a favor and give me a, a podcast review, give me a five-star rating and, um, tell me about how the podcast has helped you screenshot and email it to me, Jared at Hamilton trained.com. Um, I will be giving away a first form supplement of your choice, which is pretty cool. Um, and whatnot. And, but and chances are most people don't do this because of all the work, like to write a review, screenshot it, excuse me. Um, and, and send it to me. So your chances of winning are very likely. So I hope this was helpful. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you next time. <laughs>